Welcome back. In this next video, what we are looking at is centers of mass. So this topic is concerning when a rod or a beam or something like that doesn't is non-uniform. So the center of mass isn't in the middle. So very quickly, let's just recap that terminology. So if a an object is uniform, f for the purposes of well, generally, it means the center of mass acts in the middle. Okay, so if we have a beam, the weight acts in the middle. If it's non-uniform, this is not the case. Okay, so recognizing that is very important. Otherwise, this topic is exactly the same as the second example that we looked at, or the example we looked at in the previous video when we had the uh, plank on two supports. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at example two on page one of the workbook, and we'll have a look at that. So here's our example. A non-uniform rod, AB, is 3 metres long and has weight 20 newtons. It is in a horizontal position, resting on supports at points C and D, where AC is 1 metre and AD is 2.5 metres. The magnitude of the reaction at C is 3 times the magnitude of the reaction at D. Find the distance of the centre of mass from A. So, as usual, let's start by drawing a diagram. So I've given myself a little bit extra paper just because you may find you run out of space for this example on these lines here, but we'll see. So let's think about our diagram. So we've got our rod. We've got our supports. So this is our rod A, B. So we have A, C is one. So C is about there. And AD is 2.5, so let's put D somewhere here, ish. Okay, now it looks like they're in the same place, but oh well, it is just a diagram. So we know that this distance from A to C is 1. We know this distance from A to D is 2.5, so this distance is 0.5. I'm labeling it that way just to keep the diagram as tidy as I possibly can, because it's very easy, as we saw with previous examples, it's very easy to end up with a lot of information on a diagram and it makes it a little clunky. So I try and limit as much as I can so that it keeps it tidy and easy to read. So the non-uniform rod is three meters long and has weight 20 newtons. So it's not mass 20, kilograms it's weight 20 newtons so we don't need to worry about g at all with this so we know that it's non-uniform so it's not in the middle let's in terms of our diagram obviously it doesn't matter where we put it but for recognizing it and sort of paying attention to things let's come back to that the magnitude of the reaction at C is three times the magnitude of the reaction at D. So if we call this reaction here R, that means that this reaction is 3R. Now, there aren't any other forces. Okay, There's no person sitting on it. There's no sort of box being put on, on the bench. This one is bigger than this one which means that the centre of mass has to be closer to C than D. So just for the sake of argument, let's put the centre of mass here. And that's 20 newtons down. So remember, it's not 20 G, it is 20. Okay. Now, we're trying to find the distance of this from A. So we're trying to find this distance here. So like before, let's give that a name. Okay, 
correct. Always give stuff a name. It really helps. So we know it's an equilibrium. Okay, because it is resting on supports. It's not bouncing, it's not turning, it is resting. So, that tells us, like before, that the sum of the forces is zero. So the resultant force is zero, which means that 3R plus R must equal 20. So that tells us R is 5 newtons. So this is useful, because again, that means we can edit our diagram. You don't have to, but it helps. So, now again, before, like before, we're going to take moments about A. Again, we can take moments about any position that we like, but because we're trying to find the distance from A to the center of mass, which we've called X, which we'll deal with in a minute, makes sense to take moments about A. We could take moments about C and work out this distance and then add one to it. We could take moments about D, work out this distance and take that away from two and a half. We could take moments about B, find this distance and take it away from three. But that adds an extra step. We may as well take moments about A so that we can just get the distance straight away. So. So I'm trying to keep this all in one place, because again, that's the bottom of the page. Just going to draw a line there. Again, ideally, you should be working down, down the page with your maths, but that's not possible with this, with the space here. So we're going to let the distance A to the center of maths be X. Then we're going to take moments about A. So, as usual, let's go through and let's identify which direction things are going in. Because we're taking moments about A, it's a lot easier to see that these two are going this way. And this one is going the other way. So we know that 20 times X is going to be equal to 15 times 1 plus 5 times 2.5. So 20x is equal to 27.5. So x is 1.38. So therefore, the center of mass is 1.38 meters from A. Okay, so make sure you're relating your maths back to the question. In this case, X was never a letter that we were given up here. So we need to relate it back to the question like that. And that's kind of it for centers of maths. We've done most of the practice already when we look to the previous exercise on equilibrium, this is just taking it a little step further and adding in this complication that the center of mass is not in the middle. So to practice this kind of little bit, what I'd like you to do, please, is exercise 4D, which is on page 81. Question 1, 2, 5 and 6. Oops, no, that's not the right one. Questions 1 to 3, 5 and 6. Okay, if you want a challenge, then you've got the, the challenge question at the end of that exercise as a little bit extra. What we'll look at in the last 
potentially the last video for this week is what happens if we have this situation and then we put someone on the end which makes this almost twist off how heavy does this person have to be for this to not twist is the focus of the next video thank you for watching